Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about shitty work. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, what should you do if you get only shitty work from your company as in bug fixing and tedious boring work? Well, quit, I suppose. That sounds like a really good option. Unless for some reason you, I don't know, are you bound to them in some way? Is uh, maybe there's not that many other options or something like that? Because if that is the case, then you're pretty much fucked. Because the I know that you might have had the idea, because that kind of is. Well, uh, it's sort of understood. It's in the it's if you read between the lines, a lot of people will read into the software developer's role as if it's a engaging job where you get to be creative and where you get to build awesome stuff and then on top of that you get paid really really well and of course you get to work in offices such as the ones that they have at Google where you have slip and slides and ball pits and bean bags and all that good stuff right and everybody dresses like a hipster well, that part is sort of true but the normal workflow for a developer is not determined by this image. The normal workflow for practically every single software developer, even the people who work at Google and Facebook and Netflix and all the famous companies that you ever heard of, guys, uh, you have to start realizing that the videos that you see and the images you see are not necessarily a reflection of how it is to work at a specific company. The, uh, speaking as somebody who has been part of a company where they had promo videos on how the workplace was working and employer branding and stuff like that, I can tell you right now, the, your reality will never be as good as what's portrayed in the video. You, because what you're basically looking at is you're, you're looking at an infomercial as if it has no agenda, as if it's just reality. It's not a documentary, guys. So, what all of this boils down to is that you are perhaps a very talented and very enthusiastic programmer, and that's great because everybody wants to hire you. But the problem for you is that not everybody has an interesting problem that needs solving. You see this the same thing for an architect. There are people who need you to design an outhouse and then there are people who need you to design a skyscraper. They're both looking for you. They both need your help and you need to decide who you want to help. And that is the situation you find yourself in because the company they don't really think of what would be fun for you necessarily to work with. Some companies, the really good, really, really good ones, they are really people focused. They will look at people's preferences and try to get people who sort of are interested in the work they do. That is one part because they care about people, but it's also one part because that is very important to them because of this exact situation. Because if they put you in the company, and even if you are a super programmer, if you find the work tedious and unfulfilling, you're still going to do a shitty job. You might not do as worse, or like a, as horrible a job as someone who doesn't really know what they're doing, but you're not going to push it. You're not going to be engaged and enthusiastic. So the code that you will have might be subpar or it might be that you're very lazy. I see this very often where programmers who used to be very engaged and very uh, enthusiastic, they get into a bit of an apathetic mindset and all of a sudden more of the to-do comments make it into the code. More I promise I will fix this later or more I won't test this as well. All of this stuff which is which are symptoms of lazy programmers and not the good kind of lazy the bad kind of lazy programmers it starts making itself into the code and this is probably the one of the hardest problems for a manager to deal with to deal with workers who are 
good enough that you can't really fire them because they're doing the job but they're not actually trying to do their best they're just kind of lazily getting things done and there's really no way that you can stop that apart from hiring the right people uh, because unfortunately the company is making money from the problem that they are trying to solve and if someone doesn't like fixing bugs for example all the time or just doing this quote unquote boring work then the, you can't really change the entire company for one individual this is something that is a tough spill to swallow for a lot of developers because you come especially the, the new ones you come in and it I, honestly for me it feels a little bit like the that serious band of brothers where you have these people you follow them and you start you see in the beginning that they're really hungry they want to go to war they want the glory they want all of that stuff and then a few people die hor horrendously and they start losing people and they start to realize what this is actually all about and then new new blood tries to come into the group and they're just annoying now they're annoying because the people the, like uh, when you've seen the world and you actually know what it's about it becomes ridiculous to listen to someone who just is still high on all the all the hype around how to do things well and how to well, how to fight and dying for your country and all of this stuff uh, and the same thing goes for programmers where you you go in and you start throwing around words like microservices and service meshes and so forth and so forth e even though you like and to to the people who are working there who know that the company will never go for this sort of stuff because the, the company is simply not doing work in the way where this makes sense well they're just gonna have to listen to you and like hopefully you will realize this fairly quickly because as I was saying the company needs good software developers so they trying to hire good software developers but the good software developers the really good ones usually want more interesting work than what a lot of companies can offer so it's uh, really down to you, I would say, to figure out if this company has the potential or the interest to do things in a better way or do th give you a, an environment which is more stimulating than it is right now. And if that's not possible, you feel that that's not likely to happen, your only other option is to quit and go and find another job where there is an interesting problem. This is, I think, the one, uh, one of the things that a lot of developers underestimate, where a lot of people are more focused on getting the maximum amount of salary. I personally think that although that is something you should absolutely try to do, it's also really important to remember that just because you get paid a lot, that is not everything. Having something that feels stimulating, having coworkers that feel engaging and like fun to, to be around, that is going to be something that factors in as well for your mental state and you can think of it if you want to really break it down to a number if you feel unfulfilled at work and everything is just really really boring well the money the extra money that you're saving you're, you're gonna have to buy a lot of expensive shit to just feel happy on the time that you're not spending at work and if you think about how long you're actually going to spend in the professional environment it's going to be really expensive for you to either hire psychiatrists or go on, on really really expensive trips or buying new televisions all the time to fill up the void that is going to be it's, it's going that's going to consume you uh, because if if you have a shitty time at work you're gonna have to find a way to squeeze in high quality time outside of work and I've never really met anybody who didn't uh, who, who didn't uh, finally just ha have enough when the w when they realize that actually I hate my job so much that I can't really be happy uh, enough in my spare time so what I want you to take away from this is that if you find that the work that you're doing in your company is tedious and boring it is probably because it is tedious and boring and the problem is very simple every single company needs and wants talented developers but as I said with the architect there every person who wants to have an outhouse built or wants to have a skyscraper built they have the same sort of need it's just that for the person who's going to do the work it's going to be different levels of interest in performing the work 
And it's the same thing for software developers. That's why not all companies are made alike. And not even if you go to the fan companies, all teams are made alike. You can have, you can hate working at Google. I promise you can do that. Or you can hate working at Facebook if you are put in a really unstimulating uh, uh, position where you don't actually get to do anything interesting. And the one thing you can do in that, uh, that situation is to either try to influence your place of work or switch positions because basically you can't really you you can't blame the company because the company needs you to solve a problem for them it's not their fault that it's not a problem that you find interesting have a great day